Yeah, Susan, you also need to, I think, click on my name and, and share the attendee list with me because I can't see anybody's name. Okay, let's see here. I wonder if they can hear us. Let's see. Attendee list. I see the attendee list. I don't see a... Um... You, are, you are not mic'd, so they can hear you. But they, they are, they are all, all muted. Should I unmute everyone? Uh, you can normally we just keep them muted until uh, until question time. Oh, okay. All right. But I can't I can't even see the uh, the attendee list. It says there's seven people here, but I just see you and me. Yeah, no, there's seven. There are seven. There are five more people here. They're, they can okay. hear us talking too, I think. So, All I, right. Sorry, uh, I should probably. Sorry about this. This is Susan Matoxin here. Um, I'm with Buzz Touch as well, and I'm covering for someone else that usually does this. The main speakers tonight is Chris Robbins, who will be very very helpful to you. And we have five new users to Buzz Touch on the phone on the call right now. And um, bear with me, I can't. I need to figure out how to make this so that um, that Chris, our presenter, can see who you are. And I'm not sure how to do that. Um, Actually, promote me to uh, a presenter because I'm just a panelist right now. If you promote me to a presenter, I, I think I'll be able to share my screen and then oh, okay. I can at least get started. Oh. I think if you right click on my name or something. There you are. Make the presenter. There we go. There you are. That looks bright. All right. I'm sharing my screen. Well, welcome, everybody, to the new user webinar. My name is Chris Robbins. I'll be uh, leading this 90 minute uh, romp through BuzzTouch to give you guys all a, a heads up on who we are, what we do, how to use BuzzTouch, and uh, and answer any questions along the way. Um, you guys are all muted right now. If you do have microphones hooked up, when we get to, uh, we'll have several different breaks for questions. When you get to the question break, then we'll be happy to unmute you. You can ask your question and we'll, we'll talk it over. If you don't have a microphone or if you want to ask a question without talking on the, uh, the mic, then uh, you can type it into the question box and it'll show up on our, our screen here. And when we get to a, a question break, we'll go ahead and address all the questions. Um, we we always have a promise here that even if this is a, a 90 minute webinar, if, if we're not done answering questions yet, if you still have questions, then I'm going to stick around until everybody's uh, questions are are answered, as long as they are you know pertinent to a new user webinar. And, you know, if it gets too advanced, then I might uh, you know try to help you out offline. But um, I'm happy to answer anything that I can. So let's talk about what we're going to be uh, talking about tonight. So here's some of the questions, uh, if you can see my screen here, some of the questions that we're going to be kind of answering and then along the way we're going to build an app together and I'll show you how easy that is to do and I say easy as, as a relative term, I don't want to lead anybody on that it's super easy but you'll see that by the end of the night we'll have a fully functioning app and, and uh, hopefully that will give you a jump start on both creativity and, and how to use our, our system here. So the, some of the questions we'll be addressing here is what is BuzzTouch? What can you do with BuzzTouch? How does BuzzTouch work? Who is BuzzTouch for? How is BuzzTouch different? And then where do I start? So we're going to start off with what is BuzzTouch? And I've got a, a, a big long blob here that, that comes from our, our website that kind of uh, goes in detail as to what BuzzTouch is. But I usually just sum it up by saying that BuzzTouch is a uh, an, an online system that can you can use to help you build apps uh, and that, that kind of sums it up it's it's a combination of a uh, online control panel you know a website that you visit and make a bunch of edits in and then a source code that you download or a project that you download to open up in your compiling software and we'll talk about what all that means and between the combination of the two you can create a uh, an application without having to know anything about uh, programming and if you do know, know something about programming then you can just, just make something a, a little bit better or you can learn along, along the way. Most of our users start off with uh, zero knowledge of programming and end up finding it uh, easier to, to learn as they learn how to make apps with BuzzTouch they learn how to do a little bit of programming also and uh, just add a little bit more functionality. 
So you can see some of the some of the things that stand out there is that uh, over 175,000 people have signed up at BuzzTouch and have uh, used this this program. Um, a lot of them have apps in the App Store, whether it's the Apple App Store or the uh, the uh, Google Play Market, and uh, and we're all having fun doing it. So what can you do with BuzzTouch? Um, I think. The, the bottom line is that you can quickly develop a mobile app of varying complexity. And what I mean by that is uh, we'll discuss some of the things that that make your your app so that you can start it off simple and then grow it, uh, you know, more and more dynamic and more and more complex. Um, but but what makes us, uh, you know, makes it easier is this ability to manage the mobile app within the online control panel. And I'm going to demonstrate all of that. Um, when we're making the app in this in this webinar, but really uh, you'll you'll notice, and I don't want to spoil anything yet, but you'll notice that I'm going to download the project to my computer and launch it in the simulator. But after that, everything that I do to make that app different and make that app grow and make make add more and more stuff to it is going to be in the website. So it's not going to be hacking and and slashing code. It's just going to be point and clicking on the website and and uh, you know adding screens and adding functionality. So that's uh, that's what you can do with BuzzTouch. So how does it work? These are kind of the steps that we're going to be doing tonight. First, you create a project or an application. Each application, uh, each app that you want to build, we consider a, a project in our control panel. After that, you're going to add and configure your screens. So your screens, if you think about an app having several screens that you either swipe through or you tap through menus, each of those screens um, is a type of plugin in our system, and we'll talk about plugins also later, and uh, see a couple examples and talk about how they're how they're put together. But each plugin serves a different purpose, whether it's a, a menu or a website, you know, web view, or a map screen, or you know, a phone phone dialer. Each plugin has a different purpose, and you just kind of piece these together within your app to uh, to give your app all the functionality that you want. After that, we can download the source code or download the project, and you don't have to worry about uh, you know the term source code. If you if you get um, confused about source code and compilers and stuff like that, it's really you'll see I'm going to download a project, just a zip file. I'm going to open it up in a program called Xcode. In this case, tonight we're going to be working with an Apple project, and I'm just going to hit the run button. That's it. That's all I'm going to really do. So it's it's nothing too complex to get you started. Once I hit that run button, that's really called compiling, which is just taking all the code that BuzzTouch gives you and putting it into an executable um, file that your phone or your simulator can run. And then that's going to be it. The app's going to be running in the simulator. Once we get that done, then we're going to bounce back and forth between the simulator and the website and make a couple edits and add a couple things and see how, how they react on the, on the end product. All right, so who is BuzzTouch for? Well, before we uh, we answer that, I'm going to just flip the screen here real quick to the BuzzTouch website. And I, I usually like to lead off with this about screen, just to, if you haven't visited before, you can see these uh, all these human beings here, David, Stephen, Chris, Ian, Susan, Warren, Tony, and Trish. This is uh, what we call the, the BuzzTouch leadership team. And this is me, Chris. And this is Susan, who is uh, logged in right now as Warren. Um, Warren is the one that has the main login for this GoToWebinar software, so whoever logs in as Warren is, has to use his name. Um, <laughs> I'm Warren tonight, everyone. Yep, she's Warren tonight. I will answer to Warren, too. <laughs> we, we have a bunch of Warrens. I'm not sure if Warren really exists, but <laughs> <laughs> we see his name in the, in the uh, GoToWebinar control panel. But this is, uh, this is all us. You know, these, we are, uh, for the most part, uh, BuzzTouch users and uh, leadership team members as well. So uh, I started off using BuzzTouch over two years ago and have made several apps with it. So when I go back to this question that who is BuzzTouch for, the first answer kind of says it all, anyone and everyone. But over the last couple of years, I've, I've seen all types of people come, and, and everybody's got a different backstory and everybody's got a different motivation for you know, wanting to uh, wanting to make an app, and we've seen uh, non-developers, people who have you know no skill in 
and or admittingly no skill in, in uh, app development or any kind of program coming and they've, they've got an idea or they've got a project that they want to make and they're going to try it themselves and, and they always succeed. I've seen developers come, people who have more skills in programming and they're just looking for an easier way to put those skills to use. I've seen web developers who have uh, either either they're converting their their business to offer iOS or, or mobile development to their web development um, company or if it's just people who have a background in HTML and you know website building wanting to leverage that knowledge into making apps as well and then businesses small businesses large businesses I've seen doctors teachers photographers musicians entrepreneurs 12 year old kids you know basically like I said at the beginning anyone and everyone we've seen all kinds of people come and we'll have some success stories at the end of this to kind of show you what people are doing and, and how they're being successful with it and nothing gives us more pleasure than, than to see you know someone come in kind of learn the ropes get their project put together submit it in and finish their their project and and be happy with the outcome and and be successful with what they're doing so that's that's really neat for us to see So how is Buzz Touch different? There's a lot of uh, a lot of different solutions out there. If you if you search for Google for you know app makers or you know how to make an app without knowing anything about programming or whatever you, it is that you searched for, and usually everybody searches Google and ends up finding Buzz Touch along the way, whether it's the first thing they find or the the fifth thing that they find. Um, but but the first thing that makes us different that I think really stands out is is the community. I've been, you know, online for for many, many, many years, and I've been in, you know, chat rooms and forums and, you know, uh, different types of communities, but I've never seen one that's been so um, self-supporting and so helpful to other members. So I'm going to bounce back over to the website again and click on the forum. And a couple of things to, to look at here. You can see we've got a bunch of different forum categories that are have tons of topics. We've got over 15,000 topics, and that's topics, not replies and stuff like that. That's people that have asked a question or have made an announcement or something. And and if you look, there's, there's very few um, that don't get replied to right away. You can see a couple of the newer ones that just got posted don't have a reply yet, but it's very seldom that I see a question asked on here that isn't answered and usually it's before I can even get you know onto the website you know I, I check the forum several times a day and every time I see a question in this list here and say oh I know the answer to that I click on it and someone's already answered it and it's not another you know it's usually not another buzz touch you know, leadership team member it's usually just another user that is you know learned along the way and that is in itself just invaluable you know to have that kind of community support each other and if you think about it everybody's here to make apps whether they're they're doing it for fun or doing it for money we're all doing the same thing so it's it kind of makes sense to help each other out and uh, the, the more that you the more the, the community grows the more help that's going to be built in and it's uh, it's just uh, refreshing every day to see all these great people we like to show the top 25 here some of the people that have been around a while and you can see someone like uh, go northwest or as we know him as Mark in the forums, also 6,209 posts. That guy just answers questions left and right. Mac Apple, same thing. All these people are just extremely helpful, and this is just the top 25. Not that makes them any more special, but you can see that everybody's got you know hundreds and hundreds of posts, and uh, they're all very helpful. So it makes our job just that much easier. So we can focus on making. Um, the product itself better and and uh, help out when when we can um, when I can get in and answer a question before one of these other guys uh, gets to it first so other things that make buzz touch different Oops. Uh, the first bullet there is keep the code that what what we've been calling the source code or the project that you download from buzz touch it has a bunch of uh, you know all the code that that it takes to make the uh, make the the program actually run to make the app build and and actually work, and that's really important. If uh, 
if you've done some searching around at some of the other solutions, <coughs> you'll see that some of them have <coughs> just a simple service where you can go onto their website and click around and kind of piece together an app. And when you're all done, you, you, you just have them submit it to the store for you. So you never get your hands on the final product. You kind of just give them permission or in, in most cases pay them to submit your app to one of the, one of the uh, markets. Um, some of them will actually do that and they'll charge you extra for the source code. There's, there's some companies that charge several hundred dollars for you to be able to grab the source code. And they know that that's because once you have that source code, you really don't need them anymore. And uh, you can go in there, if you have the skills, you can go in there and edit the source code and duplicate parts of it and you know, kind of bypass their whole system of, of charging you to submit it. Um, so there's various different reasons for, for maintaining control of that source code. Usually, usually it has to do with money. In BuzzTouch's case, you know, we, we give you access right away to, to download your project, which includes the full source code. It's not encrypted. It's not, you know, proprietary in any way. It's, it's just yours to keep and edit and submit to Apple if you want, submit to Google, or Google if you want. And, uh, and that's really important. Uh, the, one of the things that I looked for two and a half years ago when I was looking for this type of solution was, was that very thing. I wanted to be able to keep the source code. And, and my idea was if I was going to spend the time to make a, an application either for myself or for a client and, uh, and then I, I put all my work into it and I got it working, and maybe I submitted it to the store. Um, if, if that company that I used disappeared, then I would be in trouble. You know, I'd never be able to edit that project again. It would just kind of be stuck in the store there as a final product. I wouldn't be able to go in and edit it. So I wanted to make sure that I had control of the source code so that if, in this case, if, if I found this service BuzzTouch and they disappeared and they fell off the face of the earth, I'd still have the source code that I could fall back on. Now, I'd like to tell you up front that we're not going to disappear. We're not going to fall off the face of the earth. But in any case, you do have uh, the source code there at your at your uh, downloaded right to your desktop. So everything that you design is yours to keep. Um, the next thing that I like to talk about that, that kind of sets Buzz Touch apart is this what I call project scalability, meaning that there's, again, some of those other app builders out there you can go into an easy, you know, nice pretty website and click, click, click and build an app, but usually it's very limited in, in what its functions are. There's, you know, a couple different screens to pick from and you can change some colors or text or something. And when it gets done, I call those like a cookie cutter solution where, you know, everybody that makes their app there is going to kind of look the same. Now, now there's, there's a fine line between having a, a cookie cutter solution and actually doing it the hard way. Like if you think about, you know, the, that the angry bird people who just you know sit and hack out tons and tons of code and you know do it the hard way well there's got to be a middle ground in there somewhere and that's where BuzzTouch falls you can you can use the online control panel at, at BuzzTouch to kind of you know build your app and get it going but you can also scale it up in complexity either by editing yourself or just by the fact that when we talk, start talking about these plugins um, Every time that a new plugin is is released, then you can add a, a, just a new function to your app. So you, there's no limit to what you can do with BuzzTouch because one, you have this full source code there, and you can you know make your modifications to it. And two, our community is always growing, and so is the functionality of our product. So you can start, like it says there at the bottom, start with something simple, and then add more as you learn more. All right, so we've been talking about these plugins. This is another thing that kind of makes BuzzTouch unique, and uh, unique in, in the sense that some some other services have, you know, they might call them plugins, but in our case, they're plugins that uh, either BuzzTouch makes or plugins that the community makes as well. And I'm going to visit the the plugin market to show you what that means. So plugins, like it says, expands the uh, allows the expandability of your project, and uh, if you think about it, again, every screen in your in your project, every screen in your app, is going to serve some function. That function is going to come from a plugin. So some of the plugins, uh, when you sign up, if you sign up for free, there's there's a core set of, of plugins that you have access to that that are more than enough to get you started and, and get you going. But what makes BuzzTouch unique again is this plugin market that I'm going to visit here at the website. 
and with the plugin market you'll notice that a lot of the plugins in there are created by other members and when they create them of course we test them out and we, we make sure that they work and everything but they set the price for them and uh, and they sell them and we put them in our market for the, to help them sell it but let's take a look at this plugin market real quick so you can see I'm just gonna scroll quickly down the list that there's Susan you said there was 60 something plugins now in the market Muted 69 plugins. 60, 60 or so. 69. 69 plugins in the market. Different, uh, you know, some of them are free. You know, a lot of them are free. Some of them, they have different prices for, let's see here, uh, a guest versus a member. So you can see maybe this one is $9.99 for a guest and, or for a member and $19.99 for a guest. We'll talk at the end of this, uh, at the end of this discussion about what a guest and a member is. This isn't a, a high sales pitch, you know. I'm not a salesperson. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a coder. So, um, this isn't going to be a high sales pitch thing. But we will make sure that you understand what the membership model is and what it means and what you get if you do decide to become a member. Um, so you can see that the different prices. Some of them are a couple bucks. Some of them are a couple more bucks. Um, some of them are free if you're a member, and they charge you a couple bucks if you're a guest. But all these different things, they they uh, add functionality. And like I said, you don't need to purchase any of them if you don't want. You can start off um, with your free membership and, and just use all the free ones. You can see down here um, towards the bottom, you can see all these free ones that you get that are more than enough. Everything that I make tonight will be using one of the free things. So you'll get a, an idea of what what kind of app you can make with the, uh, the built-in plugins, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So never be stuck with the same cookie cutter screens again. All right, and that leads us up to our first uh, question break. I'm going to remove all the mute, muting here. Oops, I did the wrong thing here, though. How do I do this? I don't have any hands up right now. So I'm going to Here's unmute me. everybody so they can. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, great. Yeah, I was just um, wondering, is there a way to, to build functionality with this without using the plugins? Or basically, you have to use the plugins to build functionality? Oh, could you hear, the, could you hear it, Chris? Or? Oh, Chris, I may have muted Chris. Hang on, hang on a second. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh my goodness, Chris, I muted you. Sorry about that. You're probably talking in. Sorry, Chris, go ahead. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Ian, come back. All right, I, I still don't have the list of attendees on here, so so w go ahead and say your name again real quick. Hi, this is Aaron. Aaron McDaniel. Aaron, okay. Uh, your, your question was, do you have to use the plugins? Well, um, I'm wondering, yeah, do you have to use the plugins to build things, or you know, can you build things without using the plugins? It, it really depends. Um, you you can certainly um, you can certainly do everything yourself if you wanted to. You can do all the the coding yourself, and and you can kind of you know use one of the plugins to see how it connects to the control panel and see how it works. And this is you know if you have the skills, then you can code everything yourself. The plugins are just what makes the the app you know code free you know for most people. Nice. is uh, once we get into the control panel, we'll see that I'm just going to be filling in some blanks in the control panel, and it tells that plugin what to do. But certainly you can do all the hard coding yourself. Now, do you have do you have skills, and have you done some programming before this? Yeah, I have. Um, never okay. with, never in, in, in apps before, but I do have some okay. plus plus ability. So. All right, well, the, the more you learn about, let's say in this case, Objective-C and, and mobile development, um, and without getting too technical, I, I will say that I've had some friends that that have made apps the hard way, and uh, you know, all hard coding everything. And I showed them what Buzz Touch was and how it worked, and they said, "Oh my gosh, this saves me like hours and hours, you know, hundreds of hours." And it's not not necessarily the plugins, but the whole view controller that that lives behind everything that controls um, the environment of the app is is what saves them time. Um, 
So to, to answer your question, really, no, but they certainly do make everything easier. Okay. <laughs> cool. I think I say I would say with that is I would start with a blank pl plugin if you did that. Take the blank plugin because there's really no code in there other than the minimal. And then, so take a blank from plugin and then duplicate the, the H and the M file. And the same thing, and with the Android, you duplicate the Java and the XML file, give it a new name, you know, blank one, blank two, or the name of whatever your view controller would be. And um, that way, you, that, that, the, blank, the blank plugin is kind of the, the starting point if you really want to start with nothing. Right. And the other thing that, that I'd mentioned about that is um, there's, there's tons of resources online, you know, different code snippets, different uh, things that you can download from either GitHub or different sources. And to be able to use that, you can actually drag that into a, a Buzz Touch project and tweak it around a little bit to connect it in, but, but you can get that, that stuff working. Um, a lot of the other solutions out there, they don't let you do that. You know, that's why they keep you away from the source code, because they don't want you to just grab a bunch of you know, free stuff off the web and copy it and paste it into a project and get it working. You know, they want to keep you tied into their, their functionality. That's that's more advanced stuff, but great question. Is there any other questions? Hi there. Can you Hello? hear me? Yes. This is yeah. I have a question. You indicated that the source code would be owned by the person that develops the app. Now, how does that? So when I um, want to make additional changes to it. I, I'm not a programmer, so I don't know anything about coding or anything like that. If some somebody wants to add something on top of that source code, will they have all the information to do so? Because that source code is under Buzz Touch, right? So if I have the source code, will they be able to dissect it to add stuff on it, or how does that work? Oh, that's that's a good question too. Um, what I've seen in the past, I've seen uh, people do, I think, exactly what you're asking. And let's, let's say uh, there's, there's a functionality that, that's missing from Buzz Touch that you want, and you want something custom done, and maybe you go to Odesk or some kind of uh, Elance or a freelance site, and you get somebody that, that can code something up for you. Um, right. in, most, in most cases, um, if they're skilled, and, and I hope that you're not paying someone that's not skilled, they can they can look in the source code and and figure it out pretty quickly. It's all very well documented. Um, that's one of the things that blew my mind when I when I first looked into it is how well documented it is, and uh, it won't take long for for somebody that that knows what they're doing to figure out how to expand the functionality. Um, so yeah, that's that's not a problem. It's um, all the the documentation is kind of built right in in the comments. Okay. Yeah. Because I I'm just wondering because. It's developed here, the application, but then if you want to use it somewhere or add something by somebody else, they'll be able to figure out that's what you're saying. Yep. yep. Okay. Thanks. All righty. Excellent questions so far. Any, any more? Okay. I'm going to mute everybody again then. Okay. Okay, everyone is. Oh, muted you too. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Chris. I muted you too. Now you're free. Now you're back. <laughs> That's two strikes, Susan. One more. <laughs> I know. Like, All right. There'll be there'll be more. Yeah, there'll be more uh, question breaks uh, as we go. We just kind of put them after every little logical section here. So I'll continue on. So uh, so this next one is where do I start now? I'm going to assume that everybody here is, has signed up at buzztouch.com and has, you know, signed up and set up their email and confirmed their email address. And otherwise, you wouldn't have found out about this webinar. But I'm going to show you just a couple other things in case you haven't explored your control panel yet, and just kind of show you a couple things to to make sure that you do set up. So we're going to look at the public profile, the developer profile, and the email settings. And then we visited the forms. I'll show you the introduce yourself uh, section of the form. And then we'll talk about the bus touch learning path and the how to's page. So I'm going to flip back over to the website again. And anytime you want to get to your main control panel menu, if you just click on your name in the upper right hand corner here, you can see I'm logged in as a guest account, just Joe Guest. That's just a fake member I use for these webinars. 
and you're going to see right down the left hand side here all the kind of menu options so I said we were going to look first at the uh, public profile and really this is kind of self-explanatory this is where you set up a screen name for the form you want to set that up give yourself a little screen name you can give yourself a little tagline out of the options here you can upload an avatar just like any other type of form and then you can add some other uh, you know welcome messages that will show up in your profile you can put in a, a location and sometimes we may do a, a, like maybe a regional meeting or something like that so we may do a search in our database to see if anybody's nearby so we can send an email out to, to give you a heads up so it might be helpful to, to put in just a, a broad location in there and then this is uh, visibility what do you want uh, someone to see when they click on your name so you have a couple different options of what they're gonna see so that's all part of the the public profile so if someone is to click on on my name and I think it, it will show you here this is what it shows it shows my name my avatar and then I said I wanted people to see my published apps which this guest does not have yet the other thing we we're gonna show you is the uh, developer profile the developer profile is is one that you can if if you do have a background or you do have some experience you can f kind of fill in these blanks the first thing it asks is what kind of um, you know operating system and in, in, uh, compiler you use and that doesn't affect anything that you're doing in your project it's just we just like to keep track of of uh, you know what what type of software everybody is using so we make sure that we're catering to the needs of our users when we when we uh, edit our our source um, you can go in here and add in some websites for uh, Twitter Facebook LinkedIn and uh, another description about maybe your professional uh, skills you can see skills and technologies here uh, a blurb about experience if you have some languages that you may speak there's we have members from all over the world so sometimes finding somebody that may speak your native uh, your native tongue can kind of help out a little bit and then if you you are uh, maybe if you do have some skills in either uh, graphic design or something you can put an hourly rate in here and if somebody finds you they can you know we don't do any of the the middleman part of, of money handling or anything or bartering of services but you can certainly advertise that you you do stuff and you do charge an hourly rate so that's that's all in the developer profile the other thing I was going to show you is the email settings which is just basically a bunch of check boxes asking you what kind of emails uh, do you want to get from from BuzzTouch and from the other members here so you can see uh, anytime I get a private message I want to get an email that's kind of important anytime I someone replies to a post that I've I've talked in that I want to reply and that's important if you've asked a question in the forums you know I always like to get an email right away when somebody answers it so I can you know get that answer as soon as possible um, so those are just you know self-explanatory email settings the other thing I was going to show you was the bus touch you or the learning paths here currently there are three learning paths that are active one is the bus touch learning path one is the iOS or Apple learning path and one is the Android learning path and as you do these they're little video tutorials that have little quizzes at the end of them and you uh, at, and for this example the bus touch learning path it kind of gives you a more in-depth uh, guide to the, the control panel and how bus touch works and everything it's a good place to start I think my uh, my PowerPoint there said that it's about 32 minutes worth of, of videos to watch and you answer a couple of quiz questions when you do that you get all these five lessons taken you complete that whole thing and this the star will fill in when you get that star it's just kind of a you know a little thank you achievement for for um, doing that and if you look in the forms you'll see let's click on uh, someone here you can see that Danny is, has done one of the learning paths. Here's another guy named Fingers Cross. He's done two of them. And you, you'll see, uh, you know, different people along the way of, that have done one, two, or here's here's three. And that just kind of shows us that you've taken the time to uh, to go through the learning paths and, you know, at least make that effort to, to find answers there first. Then the other thing I wanted to show you was in the forums, this introduce yourself thing here really if, uh, since the, the forums is one of the biggest benefits of this this whole system here you know the community is so great it's it's great to go ahead and go in there once you set up your profiles and everything and type in a little thing saying hello 
here I am, this is how I found Bus Touch, this is what I'm looking to do. And I guarantee you there's going to be someone else that replies to you saying, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm in the same boat, I'm just starting and I wanted to learn how to do this and, you know, I'm excited to, to get going. So it's good to, to get, just kind of introduce yourself and you'll get, uh, you know, warm welcome guaranteed. And then the how-to's page, let's go back there real quick. The how-to's page is a bunch of documents split into categories. And uh, what I would suggest is if, if you get stuck on something and you, whether it's something within BuzzTouch or something with your compiler on your computer, whether it's Xcode or it's an Android compiler, um, go here first and see if there's already a, like a tutorial that someone's typed up. If you don't find the answer here, then certainly go to the forums and type a question and get the question answered there. But there is just a ton of, uh, of how-to's already typed up here you know, ranging in from everything from iOS or Apple and Android. Um, and and a lot of them are very well written, you know, step by step with screenshots and everything on how to set things up and how to do different things with, with your app. So definitely check through here and, and see what kind of resources there are so that if you get stumbled along the way, hopefully you can find a, a document to help you. All right, so we are going to uh, to make an app, and these are going to be the steps that I take here. I'm going to I'm going to create my project in the control panel. I'm going to add a couple screens. I'm going to download the project. I'm going to open that up in a compiler and run it. And then once we get that thing running on the the compiler, that's all it really takes to get hooked. So you see my little cute picture there of the guy just plugging away at the keyboard, and uh, you know that's how I felt the first time that I created something and had it actually running on the simulator or running on my phone and uh, you know that was that was a, 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 a huge success for me because I've, I've tried um, you know the hard way before I bought the books and cracked open the books you know how to how to write an iPhone app in 24 hours or something went through the steps and and uh, just nothing I, I wasn't you know everything that I was typing in was exactly what they said to type in and I was hit and run and nothing was happening and that's very frustrating so being able to come here and within a couple minutes get something running on, on a simulator and being able to put that on your phone and eventually finishing that project and getting it into the store or whatever your, your end result uh, you know is, then that's a, a very rewarding feeling. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go in and I'm going to demo how you would make this, uh, this app. So let's go back to my control panel. Up at the top of the control panel is a link for applications. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new app here. When I do that, it's going to ask me I want to create a new app using my online control panel. So really I just need to give it a name. So I usually just call this new user demo. And I got to check a couple boxes here saying that I'm not going to do anything that's copyrighted and I'm going to agree to bus touch terms of services. You can Definitely read those if you want. They're all legal mumbo jumbo. I'm just going to click on them and, and continue on. So it's going to build this uh, this project for me in the database, and it's going to give me the option here to continue on to the control panel. And once I get to here, this is kind of the the control panel for this project. So you can see I can always go back to my account menu, my account main menu, and get into my control panel for Buzz Touch. But this is the control panel for this new user demo. So you can see it kind of gives me a little breakdown of what it is when I created it. It doesn't have an app icon yet because that's going to be one of the first things I would normally do. In this demonstration, for the sake of time, I'm going to, I'm going to bypass that and let, let it download the, uh, the default icon. But this is it. So this is all the, the different settings that I'm going to go through and create my app. So, uh, so I'm, going to, I'm going to create a couple screens first. And then I'm going to download the project when I get to that point, and I'm going to get it started running on my uh, running on my simulator. So the first thing I'm going to do is to screens or actions, and it starts off if you're in the, the control panel here. It starts you off with a, just a main home screen menu, and this is just a what they call a simple list menu, uh, much like you'd see on on any type of iPhone application. And we're going to start off with that. And we're going to we're going to build up a demo. So I like to uh, kind of change things around every now and then, just just for the sake of my boredom. So tonight I decided we're going to make a 
we're going to make an iPhone app for an ice cream shop. So um, when I think about what an ice cream shop would want when their iPhone app, then we may want uh, you know driving directions. That's that's utilizing a good function of uh, a mobile device is being able to pull up a map and get driving directions to the location. Um, I'm going to have a, a link on there for reviews, in this case for Yelp, since it's a, a restaurant. Um, I'm going to link to their reviews so that people can read all the great things that people are saying about, kind of give some social proof to my restaurant. And, uh, and maybe a, a link to the web page where I have daily specials or weekly specials so that someone can bring their phone into my ice cream shop and get you know an extra scoop for free or whatever the, the weekly special is. So we're going to add a couple screens here. If I'm going to keep this, this main menu here, I'll just keep that and, uh, and we'll make it pretty later. But I'm going to use this add new here. This is, this is my list of screens. So I'm going to add a new screen. And when I do that, it asks for a nickname and asks for what type of plugin. So you can see this is a list of plugins that I have to start with. And I said the first thing I wanted to do was get some driving directions. So on my drop down here, I'm going to use a location map plugin. And I'm going to just call that driving directions. And this is just to, to give me a, a name for this screen for my own kind of housekeeping. So I'm going to add that. Once I do that, I can click back on this, this menu here. Here's the whole menu for my, my app control panel instead of being on the side now it's along the top and I'm going to click on screens now I can see that I've got a map screen here called driving directions so the next thing I said I was going to do was going to have a, a link to the, the Yelp page that has reviews so I'm going to add another screen I'm going to call it reviews and in this case we're going to use what's called a custom URL which is really just it's going to open up a web view or a web page kind of a browser built into the app. It's not going to have to go outside of the app and use like the Safari browser or anything. It's going to be built right in. And it's just going to pull up a URL. So I'm going to have to provide it just a, a link and it's going to do the rest for me. So I'm going to add that. And then the last thing I said I was going to add was going to be for specials. So again, the specials I would like to think would be on my web page somewhere. So if I had an ice cream shop web page, then I'm going to use, a, again, another custom URL screen. So I'm going to add that. Go back to my screens here to make sure that they're all there. And there they are. Now, I haven't actually edited anything yet. I haven't given them any functionality. I just got them all, all ready to go, so I can kind of piece this together. And this is kind of what I'll do. I'll, I'll usually use you know pen and paper the old-fashioned way and kind of piece out what kind of screens I want and kind of connect them together. Um, one tip that I've heard used is to use index cards so you can kind of pencil sketch out each of your apps and and hold them in your hand just like you would hold a phone and see how they're going to link together. So this is just going to be my basic app to start with. Once we get it running in the in the uh, in the simulator, then we're going to start adding the actual functionality to them and connecting the pages together. So what I'm going to do now, now that I've got kind of my basic layout made, I'm going to go and go back to the main control panel here for my app and go to this download project link. When I get there, it gives me an option to prepare an iOS or Apple project or an Android. The other thing it has here is to choose what kind of plugins I want. Now the way that we've got it set up now, and this is this is kind of new, if you've been around for a while and, and you're just coming back or if you're brand new, this is kind of new where it has a list here of all the plugins but it's going to checkbox the ones that I need to make my app work. So in this case, it needs the menu simple plugin, it needs a location map, and that's all it's going to need to, to get this to work. Now this is nice because when I do package this thing together, it's going to only package the, the plugins I need, so the app is going to be smaller and quicker to load. Um, but, but just keep in the back of your mind, if we do go back and if I wanted to maybe add a PDF file to it later, then I'd have to package that in also or download it separately. If I knew ahead of time that I was going to be using a PDF later, then I can go ahead and checkbox this and add it in. And uh, even if I'm not using it, it's not going to hurt anything. So I'll, I'll do that just for fun. I'll throw that PDF doc in there. So I've selected what kind of uh, plugins I'm going to require. 
there's optional SDKs right now. Scringo is the only one we have, but we're hoping to get more partners. And SDKs are just third-party um, functionality that you can add. We're going to leave that alone for right now. And when I'm ready, I'm going to prepare the iOS project. It's going to zip together all the files that I need and give me a download link. And here it is, download the zip archive. I'm going to download that to my computer here. And then, uh, so that's the source code. So I'm going to open that up. So here's the, uh, here's the folder that it gave me, this new user demo. Here's all the files that are in there. And one of the files that's in there, depending on which project you downloaded, iOS or Android, there's going to be an instructions PDF. Now, the first time that you do this on your own, and you're not watching me do it, then certainly read those instructions PDF. It shows you how to open it up into Xcode and get things, get things started. But I'm just going to go ahead and talk you through it this time, because I know what the instructions are. So one of the, you're going to have a couple folders, a couple readme files, some instructions. And then this right here, in this case, this is the Xcode project file. I'm just going to double click on that. And it's going to open up in Xcode. Now, if this is the first time that you've used Xcode or the first time that you've downloaded this project, it's going to take a couple seconds to kind of uh, get the environment set up for you. So it's going to open up Xcode. It's going to index some of the files. You'll see up at the top here. It'll say that it's indexing some of the files. Um, and one of the things that we have to do, as per the instructions, is it needs a couple folders from my download dragged in there. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that since I know which ones they are. The most important one being the plugins. And this is all in the instructions. It tells you to grab these folders, drag them into Xcode, and it shows you how to do all this part. Just for the sake of time, I'm going to let it do it all myself. And once that's in there, this is all the source code. So if we look at some of these things, um, each of these folders has let's say the plugins, you'll see all the different plugins that we've had here. When we look at these plugins, you can see just these lines and lines and lines and lines and lines of code. This is all the stuff that BuzzTouch does for you so that you don't have to do it. And you can see everywhere here that we've got these green lines. This is all the documentation. So I said every little function that's built into all this is all very well documented. But in this case, we're not even going to worry about any of that. I'm just going to click this Run button. So I'm going to pick iPhone Simulator. I'm going to tell it to run. And the first time you do run it in the simulator, it has to compile everything up. It's got to package it all up, put it into a file that the, the phone or the simulator knows what to do with. Then it's going to launch the simulator. And then every time I, I do this after this, it's going to uh, it's going to go a lot quicker. So here's my app. This is this is this new user demo running. And we don't see anything yet. All I've got is just this home screen with an empty list menu. And this is what I was expecting to see. Because uh, I haven't configured anything yet, and I haven't put anything, I haven't linked anything yet. So let's go back to the control panel and see how we can actually make this thing start to function. So I'll go back to my control panel. I'm going to go back to my screens menu, which is where all the screens are. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to this home screen menu. And I'm going to tell the home screen menu, hey, I want you to link to these other three things. My app's not going to do anything if I don't. So once I get in there, you can see there's a bunch of different options that we're going to, we're going to go through them a little bit at a time. But the first thing I want to do is, since this is a menu button, or a menu uh, menu, a menu menu, <laughs> this is a list menu, I want to actually get my things in the list. So right here is the menu row items. Each one of these, if we look at the screenshot here, each one of these items in this list that you would scroll up and down is going to be a different row. So that's what we're going to add on here. So the row title is what it's going to actually say on the screen. So the first one I wanted to put on there was directions. And the only other thing I need to tell it is what screen do I want that to link. Now if I memorized what I named it, I can type in the name here. 
or I can go up into hit select here and it'll bring me up a list of my screens and I remember now oh yeah this was the driving direction screen I want to link to so I click that I hit add and now it's in the uh, it's in the row so if I go back to my simulator real quick and this is what makes buzz touch um, so great for me is I, I like to bounce back and forth and and see things change right away all I have to do is click this refresh button and it's gonna what it does when it did that real quick is it 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 checked the uh, the website to see if I had changed anything and if I did it downloaded the new kind of configuration file and now you can see I've got this simple list menu but it's got my directions button on here now now again if I click on that it's gonna go to a map screen that I haven't configured yet so we're not gonna do that yet I'm just gonna flesh out the rest of this um, menu first so going back to the website the other things I said I wanted was reviews and this time I'm gonna say that I think I remembered I called that reviews and if I click add and I didn't get this right then it will give me an error but in this case I remembered what it was and the last one I said was gonna be specials so let's just say weekly specials I'll use the the screen picker for that one and click on specials and add and now I've got my three row items here Let's go back to my simulator hit refresh and there's my three row items still haven't configured them yet so I still need to do that and that's what we're gonna do now so the first thing I want to do is get this direction screen working so back to my control panel I'm gonna click on screens I'm going to click this time on the driving direction screen so I can go in and ed edit the advanced properties of that and you can see there's a bunch of menus here also that will will use some of them but the main one here is the map locations so just like for the the list menu I had to add different things to the the list this time I can add multiple locations so I'm going to put in here uh, Chris's ice cream as the title and the subtitle will be the uh, the second line underneath it let me pull up a screenshot here see if it's got a subtitle you can see here location one is the title and then in this case there's an address for the subtitle and that's what it's going to look like when you click on the pen so what's neat about this is for the subtitle if I type in an address I can actually use this link over here to fill in the latitude and longitude for me now if that doesn't ever work then there's a, a link to a website here where you can just go and it just brings up a Google map and you can kind of put in an address and get a, a latitude and longitude it needs to be in this correct format here but we're just gonna try this out here I'm gonna type in an address if I can spell it right and I'm gonna take that subtitle I'm gonna click on this find latitude longitude and it found something so this this works most of the time sometimes if you use let's say I, I use the the term Springfield maybe it'll find Springfield Illinois maybe it'll find Springfield Virginia you know it, it's kind of hit or miss if you have something generalized but we're gonna hope that that worked out pretty good so I'm gonna go ahead and um, go through the other options here one is what happens when you want to tap it and I'm gonna say show driving directions I can also have it load a web page or uh, another screen I can add I can have it load another screen in the app so in this case I'm gonna have it show driving directions and then I can change the color of the pen we'll just go ahead and keep that one green and then the transition type if I want it to fade or flip we'll just keep that default so I'm gonna hit add on there and here it is here's my location title and then now it should be in my app now I could do this for hundreds of items if I wanted to if I had you know a hundred different branches nationwide then I can put them all in there and uh, people could find all my locations in this case I'm just going to keep one on there so let's go back to the simulator again I'm going to hit refresh and now when I click on directions here's the moment of truth well, it looks like it found Indianapolis and there's 86th Street so there it is there's Chris's ice cream 
So if I click on here, now that because this is a simulator, it's not going to actually help me drive there, but it's going to come up with a dialog. Do you want to open the, the Maps application and route? And I can say OK or cancel. So I'm going to cancel out of that. And there it is. So the other two pages that I need to configure is going to be the reviews and the weekly specials, which I both said they were going to be uh, URLs or just web pages. Now they both default to, uh, I think, google.com. So if I clicked on either one of those, you'll see that it just opens up Google. And we're going to have to just go into those pages and change them real quick. So I'm going to go back up to my screens, go to reviews. And then this is the main thing to worry about here, document web address. So you can see it defaulted to Google. I'm just going to pull up this Yelp address here that I had found and hit save. And then I'm going to go back and do the same thing for uh, specials. Now in this case, I happen to find this Chris's ice cream in Indianapolis. And as a side note, they have done horribly with promoting their stuff on the web. They don't have a website anywhere. <laughs> their Facebook page is completely empty. So, uh, so when I get done with this, I'm going to drive to Indiana and I'm going to tell them, hey, you guys are doing horrible, but I've made an app for you. And what was unique about this place is they serve tacos and ice cream. So I'm going to try to uh, to barter them to get tacos and ice cream. But I did find another ice cream shop here, Stewart's, that does have a special of the day. So I'm going to steal their website just for the sake of uh, getting something into the app. So I can go drive to Indiana and tell them how they should be doing it. So I go back to my simulator again. And I've been clicking this refresh button. Now this isn't something that your end user is going to ever have to do. I'll show you what, what they're going to see. If I go ahead and click out of here, here's the, uh, the new user demo that I've been clicking on. If I go ahead and launch that, it's going to pop up. The first thing it does is it checks with the website with BuzzTouch to see if there's been any changes. So since there was a change and I didn't click that refresh button yet, it's going to say, hey, the app's content has changed. Would you like to refresh? And I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So if this, was, if this was a live app in the App Store and maybe I added some other functionality to it or added another uh, special or something, then as soon as the, the user clicked on it, it would say, hey, there's something new. Do you want to get it? And you say yes, and then they get the most up-to-date um, up app configuration. So that's, that's really powerful because traditionally, if I submitted an, uh, an application to Apple, and I had to make a change, whether it was a simple typo, you know, maybe I spelled directions wrong, or you know, something like that, or I wanted to change out a graphic file, or I wanted to change a link to something. Um, I would have to, you know, recompile it, resubmit it, and wait, you know, six to ten days or something like that for them to review it. And that's that's, uh, you know, it's good sometimes, but it's a headache sometimes if it's just a simple, um, you know, typo that I did. So I can make all these changes, and the app can be what I call live out there in, in the wild, and I can still change them on the fly. So let's see if they, uh, they actually took. So we're going to go to reviews here. And now instead of getting the Google page, I do get the Yelp page for Chris's ice cream. You can see I did get the right location here on 86th Street. And let's go back and let's see what this weekly specials page looks like for Stewart's. So I could maybe take this app right into there and show them my phone and get 30 cents off of whatever it was that I was going to get. Or I can see the new flavor of the week or something like that. So here we have a functioning app. It doesn't look very good yet, but we're going to change that right now. So let me do a couple things just to make this look prettier. Because if I was to just go ahead and send this to Apple, I can pretty much guarantee they'd say, no, that's not, that's not an app yet. You know, It needs some work. So I'm going to make a couple changes quick to, to make it pretty, and then we'll uh, take some answers or some questions. So I'm going to go back to this home screen menu. My, my content screens all look good. The, the map direction screen works fine. The two websites are loading up great. So I'm just going to go in and make this thing prettier. First thing I'm going to do is go up to the top navigation bar. And instead of having it say home, I'm going to have it say Chris's ice cream. So that's the name of my app. 
So I'll hit save on that. Go back to make sure that it got. Refresh. Boom. One step down. All right, let's make it even prettier. So I've got my content here. That's not going to change yet. Let's go to, uh, let's say, the, the background image. So I've got a couple options with a background image. I can change the background color if I just wanted to change the color from white. But I'm going to actually put a background image in here. Now I've got a couple options whether I'm going to actually have an image file name, which means I'm going to drag a file into my project and compile it in there. Or I can have an image URL, which means I'm just linking to a, a, a picture that's on the web somewhere. And when I do that, then the first time that the user launches that screen, it's going to download that if they have web access. And it's going to download it and cache it into the app. But usually if it's something simple like a, like a background image that I know is not going to change, I'll usually just go ahead and compile that in. And you can see we have the option here for both large device and small device. So you can have two different files depending on if you're using it for an iPad or a tablet versus a phone. So I'm going to put in a, a file name here, which I think I called it ice cream. I don't have it there. I think it was ice cream. That JPEG. Hit save. And now if I go back to the app again and refresh it, nothing's going to change yet. And the reason is because I told this, I told the control panel this file is going to be built into the, the program, into the app itself, and I didn't recompile it yet. I didn't actually drag it in yet. So I'm going to have to do that. So I'll show you how you do that. And this is really the only thing that I'm going to do in Xcode in this whole thing. I've got a folder here called Images, which is empty. I'm going to let's see if I can find where I put it. User app, ice cream JPEG. I'm just going to take this ice cream JPEG file. I'm going to drag it in somewhere into my project. Hit finish. And this is the only time, now everything that we've been doing so far, I've just been hitting refresh on the simulator. Now I'm going to hit this run button again just because I've put another file in here. So if you look up in this dialog here, if you can see it, you'll see that it, it goes through a lot quicker because it's already compiled it once. All it has to do is just get that one new file over onto the simulator. So I'll hit run. It said real quick there, you probably missed it, but it said copying one file. And now we have a background image. Now this still looks kind of horrible. I can't read my text or anything, so I'm going to do a couple more things to make it look just a little bit prettier back to my control panel. In this case I'm going to go up to uh, list layout and color. This is where I can actually change what those rows look like. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the list style to rounded corners and you'll see what that looks like. It'll be a very traditional um, iPhone app look to it. I'm going to give a background to the row. I can go through a selector or I can actually put in a hex code if I memorize my hex codes. And let's just say I'm going to use white for that. And then I can change the color of my fonts also. So let me check like a, a pink or a purple or something to, to go with the theme of the ice cream. I'm going to hit save on that. Go back to my simulator. Hit refresh. Oh, cute. And now you can see I've got, I can definitely read my text. I've got that rounded a rectangle list now. If this list got longer and longer, I can drag through it, no problem. And uh, gives it a little bit better look. I'll do one more thing just, just because this, this default Apple Blue is kind of uh, screaming at me right now. So I'm going to go back up to where we changed this navigation bar and we changed the, bar, the, the nav bar title, but we can also change the background color. So maybe I'll go and match that font color. Hit save and see if that works. And there we go. It still looks like a very simple app, but it's a, a functional one nonetheless. I can add more and more functionality to it as we go. And uh, that's all it really takes. So it took me maybe about, what, 15, 20 minutes to compile all that together. And with that, I'm going to open up uh, to some questions if you have any.
I think that you could actually sell that app to the store. Trade it for some tacos. Uh, yeah. Oh, let me um, unmute everybody here. There's no unmute all button, so I have to do them one at a time. Okay, everyone is unmuted here. I don't. I had one question that came in that was very interesting. Is is any plans to add Windows phones to um, Buzz Touch? What do you think, Chris? Um, for for Windows phones. I haven't heard anything yet. If if I was to give a little bit of advice, I would say uh, gear up on HTML5 since Windows phones love HTML5, and that's something that works with all the different phones, obviously. So if you do do any developing up front, I would start formatting your stuff in HTML5, and then um, if the functionality does come, you can just drag it right in. If it doesn't, then you can obviously drag that right into... Uh, to these as well, and I know I've, I've, I saw somebody do that very same thing for BlackBerry, and we don't have, you notice we didn't have a download button for BlackBerry, but they were able to use uh, the resources here to make something for BlackBerry using HTML5. Hmm. That's a good okay. question. I'd say too, um, and my, my thought on that too is that, you know, it's just a lot of work for us to add a whole, there's just so many functions here to build a whole new thing for Windows, and but if it really takes off and it, and it, and it gets some, some decent market share, I think we're, we'll see Buzz Touch adding that. It won't be. It probably won't be this year, but I could see us, you know, considering that if, when, and if it actually takes off and kind of proves it's going to be going to be valuable. But if there's a good solution like HTML5, maybe we would just produce an HTML5 version too. Exactly. Yeah. In this market, you never know what's going to happen. You know, from one year to the next. So um, that's all highly likely. BlackBerry had a big conference earlier this year and after that everyone wanted to thought that blackberry might actually kind of take off again but it hasn't yet so we'll see yep good question any other questions i, I have a question if, if okay. I can ask. um I just want to like um i'm very non-technical uh, so when i'm going to be building my own app you went through this and I understood it, thank you very much. But I, um, when I go back to the site and want to do it again, is there instructions for me to go to this spot first and add this thing here first and do this and do that? Or how would uh, I repeat what you did kind of thing? Well, the, the, first, uh, the first thing is is that we are recording this, this uh, webinar. Oh, so okay. let, me, let me show you real quick where you would go. If you click on your uh, your account here, on your main menu, there's going to be webinars and events, and this may have been where you found this right here. I think this is us yeah. today, right, June 5th. Well, after we get this, uh, it takes a, a, a day or so to process it, to uh, you know, to, to download it and process the video for for uh, YouTube. You'll see a link like this. So here's the one that we did May 22nd. And you can certainly go back and watch any one of these. I think this one I made a, a pizza store app. Some of these other ones I made, uh, um, I forget what I made for the other ones, but I try to change it up every now and then so you can get an example. And But you'll be able to watch this through and you know, just fast forward right to where I was making the app and kind of go through there. Um, okay, great. But, but we are working on, we are working on kind of streamlining that, you know, the, the education process of what to do once you want to make an app and um, you know what, what's very logical for me because I've done it a hundred times. You know we we do realize that it isn't a logical flow, um, but but certainly watch the webinar again if you have any questions. Uh, ask them in the forums or or you can certainly click on on my name in the uh, in the about us screen and just send me a, an email directly and I'll be happy to help you out. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Sure. One thing you could do too is um, we have these every two weeks, right? So. You could play with it, try it a little bit, and then um, come back in two weeks, watch the whole thing again, and then you'll have more specific questions. Because people, everyone comes to the with a different level of understanding. That's good. Absolutely. That's a good idea. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, you know that it's it's kind of Murphy's law that you'll will hang up tonight and you'll say, "Oh, I wish I asked this question," mm -hmm. and uh, 
and you can certainly you know ask it in the forums or in an email or something like that. But you are more than welcome to come back to any of the news or webinars and and uh, you know kind of just uh, skim along until we get to the question part and just pop in and, and ask a question. That's by all means. That's what we're here for. Okay, that's one, good. One thing I did with the Android is I, I did all the Buzz Touch University stuff right when it came out, and then when I, when I had to work on that Android, then I, I watched it all over again, even though I actually had quite a bit of experience with Android by then. But you, you these kind of things, they you can see them on different levels. You know, you first see it in kind of a hot, bigger picture, and then actually you have to, after you have some experience, when you watch it again, you see it in a different way. Great. Exactly. Great question. Any, anybody else? I will admit that I did that at a, a faster pace, um, but but hopefully you can dissect it from uh, from watching the video again. Just All wondering, right. just if I can ask another question. Is oh, if, certainly. If um, if I'm working on an app and I kind of like finished it and I wanted to add more to it, do I just call up that app again and then just add to it, or? Like let's yeah, say on your ice cream you had three lines, right? Right. Three to, and then you, I wanted to add a fourth one. Let's say something else. I could I could go back to that and add that on. Absolutely. Yeah. I can I can add a new screen here. I did them all. One of the reasons I did them up front and uh, and just added the screens is the way that we have our downloader now. And if you remember when I clicked on the download thing, it, it pre-selected the plugins for me. Yes. So, so that was it's beneficial now to kind of flesh it out here. Um, but let's say if I wanted to add another screen, like I said, I wanted to add that PDF screen or something like that. I could either add it the, the way that I added the other ones, give it a name, tell it I want to add a, a plugin, or from this same menu screen, one of the things I could have done. It's more advanced, and once you once you do it a couple times, uh, it makes things a lot quicker. Is I can actually put in here, let's say menu. I'm going to name this row menu, and it says new or existing screen. Now each other time I did it, I selected a screen that I'd already created, but in this case I can make a new one. So I'm going to call this menu PDF, and it says if you're adding a new screen, what kind do you want? So this is a step that I didn't do before, but all this is doing is it's creating this the same time that it's adding it. So it's kind of saving me a step. So once yeah. I hit add. You can see it added this uh, menu to my row, and when I go back to my screens, it actually created that. So yeah, now, if cool. I was to refresh the simulator, I'd have another menu. I'd have another row in there. And in yeah. this case, it's looking for a PDF file that I haven't configured yet. But maybe I could have a, a menu in there that I could load in there and. It's, See, uh, Bruce, this, that actually kind of leads to the design and publish function, you know, because um, once because you really can add content after it's published too, but you can also uh, maybe you should show us how, how that works. Right. Yeah. This is uh, this is a process that that is um, it's a little newer and it's a little more advanced to get your head around, but but hopefully I can I can explain how it works. I'm going to go back to uh, the menu of this, this demo here. And you can see I've got this public publish changes right here. Now, this is going to be something that you would do once you finished all your testing, once you finished all your developing, and now I'm ready to, to put it into the market. So when I click on this link here, it's going to have a, an option for me to give it a version number, and it's going to have... Um, two different modes, design mode and live mode. And what that means is live mode is what's actually the published app that's out in the market. And then design mode is if I wanted to test out a couple things with an app. Now you notice that any changes right now while I'm designing it, any changes that I made showed up here as soon as I made them. Now if I already had sold this or put this out on the market and I've got people downloading it and using it, I wouldn't want to start messing around with colors in my control panel and have them see them <laughs> or you know, adding or subtracting menu items and have them see them. I want to kind of wait till I get it all done and test it out. So I'm going to do all that in design mode first 
and then when I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and hit publish changes. And when I hit this publish button, it's going to take all those changes at once and send them out to the app and say, okay, this is my new finished version of it. And that's different from recompiling it and submitting it through Apple. It's just taking a bunch of smaller changes that I've made in the, in the interim and then publishing them out at once. Um, this is this is really an advanced feature that that people were were begging for because the very reason of you know they wanted to play around and test out a couple new plugins, but they didn't want all that testing to be seen by the end users that are using their, you know what's considered the finished product. Now I, I guarantee once you get to that place, uh, you'll have to review all that and ask some questions in the forums because it does take a little bit of time to to wrap your head around it, but uh, we'll be happy to help that out. And actually, I think in the, uh, the how-tos, I think there's a document that explains the live and de design mode a little bit more clearly. Like one thing that one thing I know, I have one app that, that I have on the App Store that is not a, a, a BuzzTouch app. And it has a typo in it, just one typo, but it drives me nuts. But in order for me to correct that typo, I have to refile the app with Apple. If it had been a BuzzTouch app, I would be able to uh, correct that typo um, on the fly. Yep. All right, very good. Let me uh, go through a couple more things here, and we'll have uh, a final question session in case anybody's got any questions left. But we went through and downloaded our app. We got it compiled. The last thing I wanted to go over is just this membership model, and again, this isn't a, a sales pitch. This isn't what we're here for. This is we just want to make sure that you do understand what it means. Um, starting at the beginning of this year, we decided to go with a very simple membership model, where we have what we call guests, which is someone that has come and signed up, and got their account, and didn't pay anything, no credit card information or anything. Um, and, and we certainly embrace guests. And then we have members, which are the people who have decided that this buzz touch thing is actually something that may work for them and they want a little more functionality or a little more benefits. And, uh, and they've made a, a yearly membership fee for that. So let me describe some of the differences between the two. As a guest, as someone that's, that comes in and what we consider our, our free, our free uh, user, they can create up to three apps in the Buzz Touch hosted control panel. So you saw everything I did tonight was was logged in as a guest, you know, Joe Guest. That uh, that particular guest account that I've used tonight um, hasn't paid any money for any of the plugins. That was all just free stuff. So I can create up to three of those apps. I can create my ice cream app, my pizza app, and you know whatever else I want to. And it gives gives me as a as a guest enough time to kind of figure out if I'm going to be able to understand how Buzz Touch works and if it's going to do what it is I want. You know, no one wants to spend money on a solution that isn't going to do what they want. You know, it's not going to be the right solution. Um, so obviously you can make three apps. You can keep the source code. You know, you saw that I downloaded the source code and I've got that. That's the same exact source code that I would have gotten if I was a paying member. I have access to the forms for all my support needs. Ask all the questions I need to. I have access to the plug-in market, so even if I decide I don't want to pay for a mem uh, yearly membership or anything, but there is maybe there's one plug-in there that would that would make my app better, um, then certainly I can go into the plug-in market and purchase that that plug-in, and then I can attend any public webinars like this one is tonight, and then select live events. If we have live events that are open to the public, then then certainly uh, all of our members can do that. So really, it, it we don't want to really limit what you can do as a guest. We want to make sure that you can get a, a good taste of what it is that, that Buzz Touch offers and uh, you know make sure that you are successful. And that's really what we want to see. We want to see people succeed. Um, you know, wh whether we get money from you or not, you know, we want to make sure that you can succeed at what you're trying to do. And that's what we're here to help you out with. So if we look at the uh, the breakdown for members, with members, you get to create 50 apps in your Buzz Touch control panel. So that same place that I was creating my one little sample app there, I'd be able to create up to 50 apps. So certainly that's uh, that's a benefit if, if you have multiple ideas, more than three ideas. The next thing is the self-hosted software. So what that is is that's 
that's a, uh, a downloadable solution that you can upload to your own website that gives you that same control panel that I just showed you, that same bus touch control panel where you can go in and create apps, but you can do that on your own website. Now there's a couple different reasons for that. One is if you do that, you're not limited by 50 apps. You can create as many apps as you want. So that next bullet says create unlimited apps on your self-hosted server. The next one is, is maybe if I'm creating apps for a client, and let's say Chris's ice cream shop was my client, and I want him to be able to go in there and change his, his uh, specials whenever he wants to. I can actually give him a login on my server to log in and make those changes so that it takes the burden off of me. Um, that's not something that I'd necessarily want to do. I wouldn't want to give him my login to BuzzTouch and go into the BuzzTouch control panel where he has access to all of my apps and go in there and change his his uh, specials for the week. You know, he might accidentally mess something up. So there's a bunch of different reasons. We've got a bunch of people who are using their uh, self-hosted control panel in, in big ways and small ways. You know, they're self-branding it and uh, you know, letting their clients log in and make some changes to their apps. So that is, again, another um, more advanced thing, but a solution that's definitely uh, worth it if that's something that you are looking for. Of course, uh, keep the source code, just like I said, for a guest or membership, it doesn't matter. Um, everybody gets to keep the source code. Another benefit for the member is push notifications. So if you've ever used an app before that that can kind of push things, uh, little notifications to your app and say, hey, there's a new version, please download it, or we're running a special this week, you know, check it out. Then uh, those are what's called push notifications. And in the past, there's been a couple different third parties that, that we could help you find and, and you could drag it into the project and try to get it configured up. And it was, you know, it would work, but it was a lot of work to do. And we just decided, hey, let's just go ahead and build this in to our own system so that it's all done within the control panel. So you can log into your control panel and, and set up a new push notification that says, hey, check out my new app and hit send. And then everybody that's running your app will get that push notification. That's going to be a, a benefit you get as a member. The next one is um, with the, has to do with the plugin market. We said that everybody can buy plugins at the plugin market. And when we looked at the plugin mar market earlier, you saw that there was a member price and a guest price, and the member price was always cheaper or free in some cases. But the other option is that you can also sell plugins. Now I said that a lot of those plugins were made by our own members, so and they set the prices. So there's several members that are in there that are selling plugins, and they get they get that money every time they sell a uh, plugin. So if it's if it's something that you have a skill in doing. Or in some cases, one of our members didn't have the skills, but he went out and found somebody that did, and he had that person make a plug-in for him. And maybe it was the exact functionality that he needed to complete his app. And then he decided, let's go ahead and just share that with everybody else and, and put it in the plug-in market and let other people benefit from it too. So as a, as a member, you have the option of selling plugins also. And then more of a, a cosmetic kind of benefit is the membership badge. If we look in the form, again, we can see that here Danny LaRusso has a membership badge here. And that's just, again, our way of, of uh, displaying that so we can see that and, and uh, you know, thank him for being a member, thank him for being a supporter of, of, uh, of our, our system here. And uh, just a way to kind of brag that, uh, yes, you are a supporter of, of BuzzTouch. And then, of course, um, any member only benefits that get added later. We're always trying to think of new things that we can uh, give, you know, new functionality that we can give to the, the people that have supported us as a way of thanking them. And new features that get put out, you will obviously get grandfathered into them. So very simple, simple um, Thing. Let's look real quick at the, the pricing page, which kind of rolls through those same benefits again. Um, a guest is free, and then a member, in this case, it's $49.99 per year. That's a, that's a uh, promotion we're putting on right now. It's normally $79.99 per year, which we think is, is very fair and, and 
a lot cheaper than most of our competitors. I think all of our competitors. Um, but we don't even like to think about that because that's comparing apples to oranges. Our our stuff's better anyway, so it's worth whatever it's worth. But we're running a p promotion right now for forty nine ninety nine per year. And historically, with these new user uh, webinars, um, we like to thank you guys for taking the time and taking the 90 minutes out of your, your life to learn more about BuzzTouch and learn how to use it. And uh, and usually we'll give a little promo code to let you save money off of the membership. And uh, what we've done tonight for you is we, we're setting up a promo code that lets you save in addition to the promotion that's already going on. So it's kind of like double dipping, double promotion. So I've got here a promo code that's called ice cream taco, just all one word. It's good for two weeks, um, and it'll give you ten dollars off again. This forty nine ninety nine per year. Now, what I don't know, and it's kind of embarrassing, what I don't know is when this forty nine ninety nine per year is going to expire. Um, so, if you use this code while it's still showing forty nine ninety nine, then you'll actually get it for thirty nine ninety nine, which is half half of the price. And I know this is sounding a little sales pitchy. That's not my intention at all. Um, I'm just trying to get you a good deal if you decide this is something that you want. And if this uh, if this promotion does end, then it will obviously be ten dollars off of that. Um, but if if that happens, and um, you know, I don't know when that's going to happen. But uh, if you have any concerns about that or questions about that, feel free to to email me email me along the way. This promotion will be ready as soon as we stop doing this. I'll go ahead and enter that into the system so it's not live right now, but it will be in about 10 minutes. And again, that's just our way of thanking you for, for coming in and learning more about BuzzTouch and, and getting your your questions answered tonight as opposed to, uh, you know, not getting, them quite, not getting them answered at all. I think Lassa, Lassa has a question. Okay. Or your hands up. Anyway, I'm not sure. Uh, sorry, nope. I asked my own questions already. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Well, that leads us up to uh, just the last thing here is a success story page. And like I said, nothing, nothing makes us happier than than seeing someone that has come to uh, to learn how to use Bus Touch and has been successful with it. We've got just a couple examples here, and we we hope to see. Uh, all of you guys uh, end up on our success story list here soon. This is just a, a sample of, of some of them. Serge Vermelli is a, uh, a photographer in France, and he's one of the leading uh, Adobe Lightroom trainers. And uh, he decided to take all the training products that he has made for Adobe Lightroom, and he wanted to make them also for um, the iPhone. So he's taken the content that he's already had. He came to Buzz Touch. And I actually interviewed him for a podcast, and uh, his story is, is just fantastic. And he, within just a couple days, he was able to make his first app and submit it to Apple. And he's just been crushing it in the market, selling his product. Now he already had, you know, high quality information. He just formatted it into the iPhone format, and he's doing quite well with it. Tim Wolf is another one who's doing great. Um, he knew absolutely nothing about uh, programming or development or anything and he was just looking for a way to get um, information into his uh, employees hands and he owns a uh, an ambulance company and he has ambulance drivers and EMS uh, personnel that he wanted to be able to get all of their manuals and stuff into a smaller package and he was able to make some uh, some EMS and and uh, you know emergency related products on the iPhone and then Delinda there is uh, is an educator down in Texas, and she wanted to uh, to use Bus Touch as a product to actually help some of her students, you know, learn a new skill. And so she's using Bus Touch to extend learning of of mobile development to her students, and uh, she's doing a great job with that. So that's really uh, the, the bulk of the information that I've got for you tonight. But like I said, I'd be happy to answer any last minute questions before we sign off tonight. And also, don't forget the promo code that we'll be using, all one word, uh, ice cream taco. 
to kind of go with the theme of the ice cream and taco place at Chris's <laughs> in Indianapolis. That's uh -huh. free advertising for them. Who who can beat that? Uh -huh. They just need to make a website, darn it. Mm -hmm. What kind of business doesn't have a website these days? So any uh, any last minute questions before we call it a night? Well, I think Aaron, Aaron yeah, raised his hand here. here. Okay. Yeah, th thanks for doing this. I had to step away because something came up for like the last half hour, but um, I saw that you were recording this. Is there a way we could get the recording link so I could go through it again at the end? Absolutely. Let me show you where that's going to be. In your, your control panel, you know, back in your main bus touch control panel, mm -hmm. there's going to be a webinar thing where you probably found the link to this webinar. Yeah. Right over here, once we get the video processed, there'll be a link right there. So if we look at the last one we did in May, here's a, a link right to the YouTube video. So the same one, you can actually go back and watch last week's, or you can wait, and within a couple of days, we'll get a link up here for the YouTube video for this full thing. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. Absolutely. I have a question. Sure. Um, for the special, so you sign up for, if we took advantage of the uh, $10 off tonight. Um, what is the yearly amount? Would it be 49 or 79 or? If you use uh, the, the promo code that I gave, let me go back to the pricing page just to show you. It's going to it, it's going to give you $10 off of, actually, actually it'll give you $10 off the 49.99. So you'll be charged 39.99 for your first year. Okay, and then the second year and subsequent years, what would be the price? Um, I believe that promo is only for the first year, and then the second year will be it'll revert back to the whatever the market price is, seventy nine ninety nine. I'm not I'm um, not sure on that, Chris. I think that I think that early on we committed that we would keep the same price, that we whatever you paid, you would get that same price, which is kind of strange because you know a lot of places have a low price, and then the next year they kind of kind of kind of nab you. That happened to me with Meetup.com. The price went up dramatically the second year. But anyway. Right, and our you know our intentions are are not to uh, to get you in the door cheap and then jack this thing up to two hundred dollars next year. That's that's definitely not no. our intentions at all. Um, if if there's the to to be brutally honest, um, this pricing model has only been in effect since January, so we haven't had anybody renew <laughs> for a second year yet to see how this works. <laughs> so it all has to do with how it gets programmed in there. If it if it comes down to Next year, when you get the email that says, "Hey, you're going to be renewed, and this is the price, and that price concerns you," then by all means, send uh, myself or, or David Book a, an email and just express your concerns. And we're not going to chase away a customer. I can promise you that. Okay, the other thing too um, is, is there a way to if, get that clarified before we sign up? <laughs> so the other thing too is, if you decide not to join, you still have your apps. You just can't add more apps, right? So, like I say, at the end of the year, it's not like you get shut off. That that thing we, I do know for sure. If, if at the end of the year you don't sign up again, so you pay you buy for this year, but then you don't buy next year, um, you don't just get cut off. You just can't add. If you already have three, then you can't add add any more, right? Right. So it's, um, okay. So the apps that you create during the paid paid membership, they'll they'll be there for like a lifetime. Right. Yeah. So no, no, yeah. So no, next year you decide not but... to join and you want to buy a plugin, then you have to pay. Then you have to pay the the non member price the higher price for the plug plug-in you know next okay. year but see what I mean so okay is there somebody at your company that might be able to answer that question about what the the price will be after the first year yes um, D David is is the the founder so he's kind of the, the guy in charge and uh, more importantly he's the one that programs the uh, the back end in the in the uh, <laughs> The uh, money portal, so he would exactly, he would definitely know that. So, if you want to, uh, instead of trying to email him, because uh, he probably gets yeah, a we'll, bazillion we'll, of them, we can check in that. If you um, go to the about us page and click on me here, I'm Chris. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Send me a little message. It'll go straight to my uh, personal email address. Um, just give me your your contact information. I'll ask David next time I talk to him on the phone, which is almost daily. And I'll get that answer right back to you. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, I was just trying to do a search right now, but we're kind of wrapping up. But I, I'm pretty sure that we had that in writing too. So, I, but but and I have I have seen that we track the price that each person paid in their membership account. 
That's why. I'm, right. But, but anyway, yeah, we, you, you kind of need something a little more definite, don't you? Yep. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, excellent question. Any any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for spending the time with us tonight learning about Buzz Touch. Thank you for, uh, for watching me make a, a silly app in front of your eyes. And uh, don't forget the promo code. Don't forget to watch the recording again in case you missed anything. Uh, keep an eye out for that. And uh, if, if nothing else, I'll see you guys in the forum. Make sure you go in and do an introduce yourself, and, uh, and we'll be happy to, to welcome you into our community. And thank you, Susan, for helping out tonight. Yeah, sorry about all the snafus. I'll, I'll get this. Um, it takes a while to get the videos. Um, it takes a lot of computer time to get them processed. Right. Um, yep. So it probably be tomorrow at, at the earliest that I'll get it up. Yep, and if you uh, if you can't wait until that, uh, click on the, the last week's one, May 22nd one. I did a very similar app. I just did it for a pizza company. Um, it actually looked pretty good. Uh, um, I really should send it to them and because <laughs> they had a good website and everything. They just need an app now. That's um, but thank you guys for, for watching, and we'll see you guys in the forums. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, take care. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.